Car dealerships are one of those things that we all kind of hate and distrust, and yet still somehow they get away with absolutely gouging us. So why the hell does this keep happening? Pretty much since the mass production of cars, we have had car dealerships. Early on, these would have been more like your classic ma and pa local businesses. These businesses would have put a lot on the line to run. It's not cheap to buy, ship, store, and maintain a fleet of vehicles. There was a real risk that after a family put all their life savings into this endeavor, the vehicle manufacturer would just pop in and build their own dealership with lower prices and totally wipe out the little guy. At least that was one of the arguments for introducing state franchise laws, which are still in effect today. Basically, it's illegal for manufacturers to sell their own cars to consumers. The idea here was supposedly to help protect local businesses and good old free market competition between dealers. Except today, the car dealership scene is largely dominated by a few major companies. AutoNation, Pesky, Lithia Group, and so on. This group has been slowly and deliberately buying out all the small businesses they can to eliminate the competition. So that didn't work out super well, did it? But hey, at least today we get to pay more for the cars we buy from massive mega dealers, right? <laughs> Let me unpack how this all works. It starts with the dealers paying wholesale prices for cars directly from the manufacturer. You can actually check roughly what they pay for their vehicles by looking up the invoice price. Although keep in mind that they may have actually paid even less than that if there were discounts or rebates involved. Now there is also this convoluted thing that they do now called holdbacks where the manufacturer artificially inflates the invoice price and then pays the dealer that extra money back after the car is sold. So oftentimes the dealers can actually sell the invoice price and still make a profit. You're starting to see where all of the shenanigans can start. But that's just the backdoor stuff. Let's get to what is actually happening between you and the dealer. The manufacturer will suggest what is known as an MSRP or sticker price. And the worst part is, I paid sticker. But get this, while dealerships are legally obligated to provide you with the MSRP in the States, they are not obligated to adhere to it. See, we're used to prices being final prices in North America. For the most part, we don't have much of a haggling culture. Those $12 eggs in the grocery store are going to cost you $12 plus whatever taxes. But everything changes when you walk into a car dealership. It's like when you go into an airport and suddenly a sandwich is $35. There are no laws when you get on that law. Even if you agree to buy a vehicle at MSRP, you don't actually know how much it's actually going to cost. That's because the dealer is almost always for sure going to try and jack up the price by charging all sorts of extras, security features, aesthetic upgrades, extended warranties, service fees, and more. Basically, if they can charge you for something extra, they will. Yeah, but that true code. I sat right here and said I didn't want any true code. Yeah, but I'm saying that true code, you don't get it, you get oxidation problems. This is an understandable business practice in many scenarios. Car dealers don't always make a ton of money on the car itself and rely on these extras to turn a profit. But there's something that feels extra sleazy when it comes to a lot of these car dealers. Consider, what's the one thing you feel when you step into a dealership? Most likely, terror. Sheer and utter terror, unless you are a psychopath or a car salesman. Now this makes a lot of sense. In all likelihood, this car is the single most expensive consumer product you have purchased or will purchase in your entire life. And it's one that is going to keep costing you as long as you own it. And if you are living somewhere in the United States or Canada, this car is not just a financial purchase. This is a large part of your identity and your self-worth. But with cars, you have to customize. It's all between you and the car you build. It's a bond, it's a commitment. Sounds like a marriage. We get into this whole cultural phenomenon of vehicles in our video about why America is obsessed with trucks, which you should check out if you like this video. But here you are in the dealership and you wanna make the right decision that you can afford now, afford down the road, and that's not going to break down a few months from now. It also has to be safe for your loved ones and it has to make all your friends jealous when you pull up in it. There's a lot riding on this decision, but the thing is you may not know how to determine all this because cars are very complicated 
connected devices, and the majority of us just really don't understand the ins and outs. To warranty or not to warranty? How much insurance do you need? Which added fees are actually legit and which ones are scams? The whole thing is just a situation that you cannot be possibly prepared enough for. And this is where we could really use honest professionals who knows the ins and outs of car builds and how they suit various different lifestyles. And that would be, in theory, the person who is going to be selling it to you on the lot. Look at the size of that trunk. You could put three bodies in there. But sadly, the people on those lots are often incentivized to manipulate and exploit our insecurities to turn a profit. Just think about the add-ons they typically recommend, okay? They have a lot to do with making us feel safe and secure. You can now purchase protection for what feels like every single part of your car, including your keys, which, as I have learned, because I almost lost a pair of keys, can cost like hundreds of dollars to replace. And can you imagine going in a time machine back like 30 years even and telling people that you have insurance for your keys now? I'm gonna read your thoughts. Let's see now, you come here from a great distance? Yeah, exactly. And don't tell me. Yeah, the world got weird and it got weird fast. And the thing is, in that high stress moment, these add-ons might make sense. Nobody wants to replace a $500 key. But then remember, you've never lost a key in your life maybe, especially if it's one that expensive. And that windshield protection would be really handy if you did totally trash your windshield, except that that's not exactly a common occurrence and you might end up just paying more on your insured windshield than actually fixing it. But fortunately, this is not a video of a list of all the different scams that you could get scammed by because that would be kind of a boring and very fear-inducing video. Just know that they're trying to push a lot of stuff on you and they will go as far as lying about what you need to get financing just to make sure that you can buy a bit more. We've even come across stories where dealers misplace customers' cars in case they get cold feet and try to drive off without something new. Like, could you imagine you pull up in your Corolla and you're like, no, nah, I don't wanna buy anything, thanks, and you walk out to your Corolla and they've stolen it? Where's my old car? Now, you hope that these kinds of stories are just told for the internet's glory in a Reddit page somewhere to get a couple of upvotes, but sadly, I wouldn't be honestly surprised. Maybe some of these add-ons are legitimately useful depending on your circumstance. And to avoid warranty complications, you might be better off going through your dealer for some services. But in many cases, you can get a better deal from someone else. You end up paying a premium for that convenience when you do it through the dealer, which might feel like it's worth the price in the moment when you're tired and overwhelmed and scared and you just wanna get the hell out of there. But you could save a lot of money by just taking it slow, taking a couple of deep breaths and saying no. But here's the thing, even when you lay your foot down and you say that you don't want any of these fancy extras and you, you, you better back off, buddy, you might not get out of those additional charges. Oftentimes, dealers modify the car before you even enter the picture. If they pay for a fancy and totally unnecessary paint job, you can't just scrape off the paint and pay for the original. In general, it's wise to be very careful to read through all the different fees to make sure they didn't sneak something in there that you just shouldn't be paying for. Taken together, it is easy to see why you may end up paying hundreds, even thousands more for a car that you thought you agreed to. And that is all before we get into the dark and horrifying world that is post-COVID pricing. Now, if you've looked for a car anytime recently in the last couple of years, you know exactly what I'm talking about. See, before COVID, it was generally good sense to always negotiate below MSRP. In some cases, you could even get a dealer down to invoice price, which just seems laughable today. The short story is that we're facing a little bit of a supply and demand crisis here. When the world first locked down, car sales plummeted as people really weren't leaving their houses anymore. But now things are pretty much in the opposite end of the spectrum. Meanwhile, the car industry is facing supply chain and labor shortages because of all this disruption, and it's not really well equipped to deal with this demand. So basically, car dealerships have no incentive to negotiate reasonable prices for their popular cars because what else are you gonna do? 
Right now, they know that if you don't take the deal, they'll have a year-long wait list of others who will. It's not super unheard of for dealerships to charge tens of thousands more than MSRP these days. And people are buying them. Donut Media has more than a couple videos about this, and it's disturbing. And if you do like Donut Media, they're an awesome channel that makes a lot of car-related content. Always gotta support your fellow YouTubers, you know? Now this obviously sucks for consumers like a you and a me. But apparently even manufacturers are getting mad. Remember, they're not allowed to sell their own vehicles. So in some ways, they're also kind of at the mercy of these dealerships. They're worried about how these markups are affecting their sales and their reputation. And for good reason. In the past, entire car models have been wiped off the market because dealers misread demands and slapped a ridiculous price tag on them. Them. Now you might be saying, some newer brands have just learned to get around these dealers entirely by being a bit creative in how they do things. Tesla, for example, has their own car showrooms, not dealerships, and they can sell you the idea of buying a Tesla without actually having a Tesla there for you to drive off the lot. You gotta buy that online yourself after leaving their property, because laws are weird. Tesla has had some of these older manufacturers a little jelly for a while now. With the latest pricing insanity, you can bet that the big names are more motivated than ever to go the Tesla route and cut out that middleman. Ford in particular has been going after dealerships and warning to cut all the markups, all the while talking about moving towards a totally different online business model where prices can't be negotiated. And if more big names follow suit, it could just spell the end of the dealership as we know it. And honestly, it sounds kind of nice. Although that is not without its own set of problems also. And at the top of this list is the fact that we're just getting pushed new cars all the time to begin with. Now I shouldn't have to say this, but cars kind of take a lot of resources to manufacture and they're often just stockpiled somewhere or end up in a scrapyard when we're done with them. And these are some of the most expensive and stressful things that humans have to buy in their lifetime. This is not something that should be bought every couple of years, and yet I feel like some people treat them like iPhones, a means of flaunting wealth that you upgrade every couple of years or so in case you look average for a moment. Now, yes, there are some new cars today that have legitimate upgrades that make them desirable, safety standards and whatnot, but the sad reality is that beyond some fancy tablets in the dashboard, cars really haven't gotten that much better unless you're looking at the electric models. The sad reality is even today, buying a used car is extremely expensive. Because here's the thing, if you live in North America, you probably need a car even if you don't want one. Now, I've made it my effort to live in cities where I don't need a car, and I've lived without a car for a number of years, but now, I'm living out of a Toyota Prius while I circumnavigate North America traveling with my wife. And you know what? I kind of love the Prius. It's an amazing little car. But when I live that car-free lifestyle, I have way less stress in my life. This is one of the biggest purchases I've ever had and some of the most scary and intense situations in my life have come from driving it. Today, there is a ton of ways to live in a big metropolitan area without a car. Car sharing is very popular and more and more we are seeing cities build our communities around walkable neighborhoods. So if you're stressed out and horrified at the prospect of going to a dealership and being stared down by those vultures trying to sell you something, let me tell you, you can just go and buy a used car and live in it while you drive around the country. That whole adventure, of course, is documented on my other channel, which you can check out. It is very different than this kind of content, but maybe if you like listening to me talk over here, you'll like watching me suffer as I live in a car and see the world. But the car purchasing decision is not one that you should take lightly and it is not one that you should feel pressured to do for any kind of reason, especially by somebody who is going to profit from it. So do your research and consider buying something used if you can. And if you did like this content, maybe subscribe and uh, we'll see you next week.